Hi, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Nicholas Sablon. I work at Tidewater Orthopedic Associates in Hampton and Williamsburg, Virginia. I'm an orthopedic surgeon who specializes in sports medicine. And a lot of questions and articles have been written recently with regards to the preponderance of ACL injuries that are occurring in these highly competitive athletes. And just wanted to answer some questions that may, may come up frequently amongst athletes, especially female athletes, regarding ACL injuries. There's a few theories out there as to why female athletes are have a higher predisposition to develop the ACL injuries that we hear about and read about so commonly in the newspaper and television. Um, some of them are hormonal changes that are being attributed to female athletes, um, a generalized laxity that is present because of this. Some of it are, are purely physical constraints because as women become more mature, Sometimes the alignment of the knees can change to the point where it predisposes ACL injuries to occur. And some of the things are really just based on the significant increase in the number of female athletes that are out there participating in youth sports and specifically high risk sports like soccer. So non-contact injuries mean that it's not a push or a pull where somebody's colliding into each other. The vast majority of the injuries that I see are these non-contact injuries it's typically something that I see the end of the game, fourth quarter type situation where there's a generalized muscle fatigue that can occur because these muscles like our quads and our hamstrings are secondary sta and significant stabilizers of the knee and when those muscles become weak we rely more on structures like our ligaments to provide stability to the knee and so with that we see these injuries occur more frequently at end of game situations or where fatigue becomes a factor. So there's very good data out there in, in the orthopedic literature regarding hopefully the prevention of ACL injuries and, and we always talk about this that you can never stop ACL injuries unless you stop participation in some of these sports that have a high risk but there are many things you can do and those numbers that you quote up to upwards of 50 percent really is a focus on if you look at different studies, six to eight week programs with a focus on things like balance and proprioception, which is kind of the sense of where your legs are in space, as well as some core strengthening exercises and, and certain mechanical changes that can go on with regards to jumping and cutting. And, and, and a little 10 minute exercise that can be done before the start of practice can really drastically decrease the incidence of ACL injury. ACL injuries is definitely one of the most common procedures that I perform currently and when I always talk about ACL injuries I think most people know this but what has to happen is you have to take another piece of tissue to be able to fix the ACL. It's not a sewing of the ACL like you may have seen with other injuries. Um, with that being around typically for my young athletes we're using a piece of tissue from their own body, whether it's a portion of their patellar tendon or a portion of their hamstrings, and using that to what we call reconstruct the ACL. And although the success rates are great, and if you look at the return to play being upwards of over 90%, it really is a long and arduous process that can include up to 9 to 12 months of physical therapy and hard work. So there are still some, you know, data out there with regards to the long-term outcomes of ACL injuries and still clearly whether it's a combination of the ACL injuries that occur as well as the concomitant injuries like damage to the cartilage, damage to the meniscus and other ligaments that the incidence of arthritis developing later on in life is still unfortunately higher than what it is without an ACL injury and there's a lot of current data out there regarding how can we minimize the effects of the development of what we call post-traumatic arthritis after ACL injury. For most athletes they're going to know the moment. It, it, it usually is signified by a pop in these non-contact injuries, the leg gives out and for some athletes, especially if adrenaline is high, they may be able to play another series. But it's, it's fairly difficult, especially if your sport involves cutting and pivoting, to be able to continue to play.